Hey guys, I was just in the house this morning and there was a reference on TV to Napoleon Dynamite. It got me to thinking, all this guitar stuff has pulled my focus off of other important things like my computer hacking skills, which I touched up on this morning already, back to expert level, and especially my nunchuck skills. So I'm going to practice a little bit and we are going to get right to the bench. Let's go! All right, guys, we're trying a new camera shot here where I can show you what's on the bench. I'm trying to get this. I was going to set up a GoPro, but the fisheye is just too much. I'm just trying to make sure you can see everything well, like the Ace of Spades. Anyway, back to reality. Love you, Lemmy. You've seen this guitar before. I got a playlist about it. It's the... Archcraft Archtop right up there right about now and it had a hole in the back now I'm asking questions of you guys about what I should do with this guitar like making modifications that hole right there makes a big difference in this guitar so you remember in an episode we we patched that hole we put the binding on the back I still got to dress this up like with a piece of tin or something like that. Maybe we'll do that. I put the binding on the front. That's new here. Um, and now it is time for the fretboard. Now, um, you can see that the fretboard here has a couple of issues. First off, these frets down here look really dark and need to be cleaned up. So maybe we can just take this file right here and no not even um i'm even worried to do it with sandpaper so i'm going to show you a way to do that that we don't tear this all up next thing i want to tell you about is if i put remember this guitar is almost 90 years old if i put a piece of rosewood and a piece of metal thin metal let's just use a piece of fingerboard and a fret and I put them somewhere in an attic for almost well maybe somebody played it at first or whatever but maybe uh, it sits there for 75 years and maybe things start to shrink because they don't have moisture or all those kinds of things do you think that the wood and the metal are going to shrink at the same rate answer no why is that important well, because if the wood shrinks and the frets do not, the frets are always dressed. And we've done some episode about fretting, and I'll give you a playlist. I'm having to do contortion stuff to get this to do this fretting up there right about now. All kinds of stuff in there. Uh, cutting frets, pressing them in, fret press, how to make one, all that. Anyway, we know that when we're fretting, that we cut these off and bevel them off and dress them so they don't hurt your fingers when you're sliding up and down. Well, guess what? I can feel all these frets. And the reason I can feel them is not because somebody did a bad fret job. It's because the wood has shrunk. And shrinking wood does odd thing. It twists, it cracks, and splits. And splits and cracks are the same thing. Except... A split maybe isn't all the way through. Anyway, if you run across one of these guitars somewhere and you run your fingers down and you can feel them sticking out, the first thing you're going to do is look at the fretboard. And the fretboard is here. I'm going to put fret markers in here. Again, I'm going to make some modifications to this so people are going to go, why are you doing that? Well, maybe because so somebody like Troy Murrah playing in some dive bar in Long Beach can look down at night and see the frets. Maybe that's why, without turning it this way. Anyway, we're getting way off out in the weeds here, but the fretboard here is thin and it blends in with the paint job or the stain job here. So if I start seeing a split here or a crack or I look down the neck and I see that the fretboard is warping and this side is standing up or whatever, there's a lot of work to do. Either that or you've got to get your nut up higher or your bridge up higher down here, and that's not going to be good. Anyway, next thing to look for is 
if you buy one of these and you run your fingers down and you don't feel that, but the ends of the frets look like they've been dressed and they look different than the top, that's an indicator that somebody's already gone through and tried to get rid of this and um, and hide a shrinking fretboard. I, I mean, these are discussions you would have with somebody who has the guitar. On a guitar like this, it hasn't had a lot of care. I can see right here, there's a little line running this way, parallel with the fret. And if you start looking closer, maybe with a magnifying glass, you'll see that those lines are directly below the string. So somebody playing it after a while, those lines would be there. That's, that's an indicator that nothing's been done to the frets as well. But we are going to take care of this and then we are going to dress these up so they look at least as shiny as these, but we're not going to damage them. I'm going to show you a way to do that and I'm going to show you how to protect the fretboard. The last thing I want to tell you about is when you're working on a guitar or looking at a guitar you might be purchasing some of your better guitars have binding along the fretboard let's look at one quick okay let's put the archcraft aside for a second here i'm trying to get used to this new setup and let's look at this one this is a Ventura made in Japan. It is what's called a lawsuit era guitar. Look at that. I want to make sure that the camera shows you everything here. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty, isn't it? It's even got a wow bar on it. It's kind of like a Bixby, but not really. Anyway, I got this one around. It's pretty nice. It's got Binding on the F holes. It's got a three-way switch. It's got a couple of pickups. I mean, this is a pretty nice guitar. It's got some issues like a blemish on the back. There where it looks like somebody dropped it. Got a couple of thin cracks or some. Got this phony sticker up here that I got to take off. We're running a family channel here. But there were people in Japan making knockoffs, identical knockoffs of American Gibsons and Fenders and the like. And um, there were lawsuits filed and then what ended up happening was the American companies um, figured out that some of these Japanese knockoffs are starting to be of better quality than um, their own guitars. So, you end up having factories over there after the lawsuit. So part of the settlement in some cases what was the American companies ended up with manufacturing plants that were already set up for them. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. You can see that this one has binding everywhere. And uh, I don't want to get off out in the weeds, but people think that these guitars are very valuable and they can be, but you really want to watch the binding. So something I'm telling you about in this episode is you can see that somebody put binding down the edge of the fingerboard here. And um, there are fret markers, and I'm going to show you how to do these too. But if you look really close, I don't know if you can see this. Let me pull closer. The binding goes up the side and is actually close to the bottom of the fret. So a little bit of that fret is actually hidden under the binding. And if you look close, there's a strip of purfling right there, and it's black. So there's a very thin layer, and then they put the binding on. Now, here's the problem. If you're starting getting the neck to shrink, the frets are not going to shrink. So, as the fretboard shrinks, and this sucks in, that leaves the binding uh, on the side of the fretboard to be loaded in a way it's not so you'll start seeing this pulling in this popping out and then you want to start looking for cracks if you start seeing cracks on these guitars yeah on the binding bad deal um, you start running into very expensive repairs so you'll see these 
uh, on the internet, on eBay and Facebook Marketplace and stuff, and you're 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 uh, looking to jump in on one, and there's a difference between restoring one and doing the kind of stuff I'm going to do with this one. You'll see this one pop up again. This is a Ventura, and um, it was made in Japan. If you're going to get into these things, look for it to say Japan. That's for sure. As usual, when it comes to the fretboard, you want to make sure that nothing is cracked and split. Remember, if you see this stuff on your splitting, that's an indicator that you might want to look down the neck and make sure that nothing's bowing and popping up here. Uh, last look here on this, you can see that there's a black layer. They call this purfling, uh, different layers of it. So there's a black layer, white layer, and another black layer, which is the headstock material. But anyway, nice little guitar. You'll see this one pop up at some point. So back to our Archcraft. We're going to walk through this step by step, but number one, we're going to um, put fret markers in there. Uh, I'm going to put it a third, fifth, seventh, and double up on the twelfth again. So when you're in some low light environment with a bunch of low lifes, low light, low life, that's a good one, um, you're going to be able to see where you are. Um, we are going to touch up these frets so they're not sticking out and then finally we're going to clean up these dirty frets. So let's start with how do you protect this while you're doing all this work. Remember always keep that rag up here because you're going to want to use this for a table. Next is I got this pretty cool kit of stuff here. Um, uh, this fret kisser, let me tell you about this one sometime. It is awesome. I've got um, nut files and all kinds of things, but I want to show you that I've got these gadgets here, and these are really cool. They protect your frets, and you simply put them over the fret like this. You see that? They fit over the fret. Now, what's missing here is I'll tell you to use rubber bands. Rubber bands are kind of iffy. See these ouchless? It's important that they're ouchless uh, ponytail elastics. Way better than rubber bands. Anyway, you just hold that on there like so. Put it here and then pull it to the front and drop it down like that. You're working on frets, gets out of the way. Some people like rubber bands because they're a little bit thinner, but if I'm going to do something like get the dirt off the top of the fret, this is going to be good for me. Remember, we're not building a cigar box guitar here. We're just going to go through and bust this up and do whatever we want and then file it and worry about finishing it later. This already has a finish on it. It's old and we don't want to mess it up. So every opportunity you have, use these fret protectors you can get a few few sets like that they come for bases and different widths of frets hey i'll give you a link below okay we have changed the camera angle here so we can zoom in on this area where the work is and while we're here you thought i forgot the matchbook of the episode well i certainly did not it is the wild goose inn supper club Hey, this is for my friend Denise in Wisconsin. Do I have more than one friend, Denise in Wisconsin? Of course I do. But the one, Denise in Wisconsin, the particular one, you know where this is. Hey, Denise, how you doing? I appreciate your comments, and I've known you a really long time. You've been a great person the whole time, and uh, there's very few people in life like that. First thing I'm going to do is show you something really cool. Look at this. You know what those are? Yeah, some kind of vinyl something or other that makes a fret marker. Look at that. You need this. Do you think I will give you a link below to this? Yeah, link below. So a couple measurements we need to be concerned with. And that is the distance between the frets. 
center of the fret to center of the fret and the width of the fretboard, the depth of the fretboard. So, we are going to put fret markers in at the 3rd, 5th, 7th, and 12th frets. Now, why aren't I going to put them in at all the other frets? Because I said so. And this is my channel. Any other questions? There's a dislike. See ya! So, the first measurement is we need to know we don't put frets, fret markers right on the third fret. We put them between the second and third fret right in the middle. So, we're going to use a metric ruler. Why? Because I don't want to try and figure out how many 67 to 80 force there are when I can just lay this here and say, oh look, it is 34 millimeters between the second and third fret, which means my fret is going to go at 17. I put a little mark there on a piece of tape and I know where that is. Next thing I want to know is how far is it from the top of the fretboard to the bottom of the fretboard. And we have to look closely because this is the same color as the rest of the neck. So I take this, I slide it down until I am to the bottom of the fretboard. I know what that measurement is then. And you know what? I've already done you a favor because I need to go halfway between what this measurement is and the top of the fretboard. And so I've already done that. You see that right there? I have two of these. Yeah, I got them from the Double Mint Twins. What did you think? So with all my measuring scrap apparatus, I have found where the mark needs to go. And I'm going to use my school board election pencil to make a mark right where that hole needs to be. Now, the very careful part. I'm going to drill this. I'm just going to go on it. No, because if it slips, I have a huge problem. So, I'm going to calculate risk and say, I'm going to take my awl. I'm going to put it on the mark. And I'm going to take this hammer. I'm going to hit it as hard as I can like this. No, because if I do that, I'll split the fretboard. Then I have a problem. So, I am just going to tap it so I know where it is. Now... I'm going to take my drill. The bit is the same size as, it's a little bit smaller than this fret marker material. This bit is 197 64ths of a thousandths divided by 9 equals, yeah, that's why I use the metric system. Notice that there's a piece of tape on there. I only want the hole to be that deep. When I see that flapper tape pulling up sawdust, it tells me I'm deep enough. I just put that on the all dot and there we go. Now, I take the most popular name in Clinton, Missouri, Elmer and I put just a tad of that down in that hole just a tad like that then I take this I push this down in the hole oh see it pop there now I take my stumac fret pliers that I use to cut wire no we don't do that we take these other ones that we have that I don't even know what they're for and while the tape is on here we get as flush as we can. Do we want to do that? Not just yet. We're going to pull this up just a tiny bit. Not all the way out tiny bit but just a tiny bit. Then we're going to snip that off as flush as we can get it like so. You're saying why did you leave the tape on there? Well, because now I can take my file without damaging anything except the camera angle and I can just make sure that that tape is there. 
until this gets smooth, I just do that. Does it have to be all the way smooth? No, you know why? Because I pulled it out a little bit. Why did I pull it out a little bit? Because once that edge is smooth, I can just tap it like that and it will actually be below the tape when I pull it off. It's just that easy. Check me out. Ken, you are amazing. Yeah, I know. I know. So now we're going to go in and do the same thing at 5, 7, and we're going to put 2 at 12 so nobody gets confused. See in a bit. So we got 5 and 7 done. And when, on the 12th fret here, I want to put 2 in because that's where the ringing happens. We that one. So I marked the middle between the 11th and 12th fret, found the middle, and then come off each side of the middle. And that is where I will put my fret markers in. So I'm just going to watch me split the fretboard out here, tap it like that, and then go to the other mark, tap it like that. Did you see how gently I did that? Can you actually believe that Ken Falsgraf does anything gently that's not known to be me. And then there's one. And there is the other. Isn't that clean? Yeah, it's as clean as the joy of bathing by Bob Ross. Yes. There we go, we're down here on this one. You can tell when you're filing, you can use your thumb and everything. I mean, you can always get a new thumb, but you can't always get a new guitar like this, right? Always remember that, wise, wise words coming from me here. But you can tell when you're getting close because that tape will start peeling up there. So let's take a look at our mastery, yeah. Look at that. There we go, a little spit on it from like grandma used to do in church with your hair. If grandma did it right, it's good enough for me. That means it's good enough for Mrs. Olson. That's right. Hey, Mrs. Olson, how you doing tonight? All right, those came out nice. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these fret ends and I really, really don't want to scrape up this fingerboard or this neck. So I'm going to use where those frets are sticking out right there. I'm going to butt this painter's tape right up to the bottom of those frets like that. Run all the way down the board. And since the board extends over the body of the guitar a little bit, we'll get that drill out of the way. Remember, I got cloth under here. I am going to protect the top of the body that way. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks good in the camera. And then I can take my chick flick teal scissors. Look at that. I was paying attention. Mrs. Liebold's class at Lincoln School. That's right. Anyway, I can put that right there where the body meets everything. Like so. Tear that off. And then make sure this gets protected here. I'm going to do that on both sides. Then I can go about the very, very careful process of filing the frets, which is basically taking this file and holding it and running it down like this, knowing that this tape is here to protect the fingerboard. Don't be shy. You can just go like that. And as long as the file isn't hitting this tape, you're good. Now, I have another little gadget over here called a fret dresser. I've given you 
a link to this before in an episode. Remember this thing? It's got the belt that moves when you wear out the tip of it. I maybe should give you a link to this down below. Now see, I can't feel that one. That one's just a little like so. As soon as I can't feel the, the end of that right there, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to redress the frets. Remember, we've had this thing strung up and it was good. It's just like that, see. Now you can tell how much they were sticking out because, see, there's no marks on that, that tape yet. There's a little bit right there where it's coming out, but as long as I'm not going through that tape, I'm good. I'm not marring the fingerboard, and that is why we put that tape right there up against the bottom of the fret. So I'm going to go down and do those. Once I've got that done, I can turn this over, and I'll be batting cross-handed here doing this, but I can take this thing now and I can come to the frets I've done and do that. Do I want to do that yet? Oh no, I need to use my fancy tool, remember? Remember these? I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one here. You can see that there's marks on them from being sanded on. Now, I'm going to use this color band on one of them and I'm going to use a different color band on the other. So that way when my old man memory gets bad I can say I remember pink or gray. Now all I've got to do is I can push this one up to here. I'm only going to work one side at a time. I can pop this down and I can just take this. And you'll notice that everything sticking up, I can control this with my thumb. But when I start seeing marks over there, it's telling me that I've got the end of the fret done right. Here we go. And now I can move off to the next one. Now this is tedious. This is one of them things that keeps you out of a psychiatrist's office. At least most of you didn't work for me. It's supposed to be therapeutic. But yeah, this thing is handy. And those. Don't forget those. All right, finally, you see these frets up here? They're pretty clean. Um, but these frets down here are dirty. So these might have been used less or something. Remember I told you a little bit earlier that sometimes you'll see six lines going down the fretboard that mysteriously correspond with the placement of the strings. Um, I don't really see those here. So that tells me the fretboard is probably pretty level. I see one right there. But again, we're not here to, to do anything with these because they worked fine when we had it strung up. So just remember that. You start filing one, you start filing all. So I know. Let's just take this and do a quick stroke over them this way, and then we'll do it, come in with our little fret dresser, and everything will be fine, right? No, we really don't want to do that. Remember our friends here that do this? We just want to take this. Remember, I try to get myself in a pattern. Move that next stand down there. Oh, by the way, this next stand was was very handy for me. Okay, so now we can use this stuff, right? No, we don't want to use this stuff. Remember when I was showing you how to polish bottlenecks and I told you if you want to make them really smooth, you go through and you can do 320 grit and then you can do 1500 and then you can do thousand two thousand well these sanding pads remember I told you about these I'll give you another link below these are handy you can wet them you can do whatever you want but I would start off with the thinnest one or the highest 
number of grit, which means it's the finest. Then I'm just gonna hold my finger here like this. Now the nice thing about these is I can fold them and get the surface like I want them. And then I'm just gonna take it and go over the top of it very lightly, like so. Okay, I am not looking to remove. See the difference between that one and that one? Now we just go down. And if you start getting brave, you can just hold this with your finger and go over it like this. We're just trying to clean those up a little bit without marring the fingerboard, like so, okay? You can see it comes off pretty quickly. And then when I clean up the fretboard, you can see how much is coming off there. When I clean up the fretboard, the frets will get clean as part of that process. But we are definitely not trying to file the frets. They worked fine. There was no string buzz on this thing. And I'm certainly not going to mess with that. So I'm going to go down, uh, make sure that everything is done that I've shown you. Finish this up and I'll see you at the end. Okay, guys, final tip at the bench. Um, we've got the frets cleaned up. None of the ends stick out anymore. And um, we've got this cleaned off, fret markers are in. So last thing, that rag you use for the table to make the top of your guitar a table, last thing you want to do is just run it down the edge. And if there's a fret that's not right that's going to hang, it's going to hang on this cloth. So that's a good indicator. So use that. Use tape and use whatever you need. Um, kind of leave it better than than what you started with but again this thing started off with holes and cracks and whatever so we've made it nice as we can do now i think we're going to get in to this and mess it up as much as possible by putting a pick up on it you know what i don't think i want to do it that way i want to see if i can put electronics on this thing without using anything more than the pick guard holes that are right there and right here and that is the topic of another day all right that was really pretty easy um like the way this turned out um and this will of course be on the playlist for the archcraft and junk pile and fake luthier playlists up there so little hints of things you can do with junky guitars that you really can't make any worse um want to give some uh shout outs uh, number one hey mr cobra kai starter kit i hope i gave you a lesson up front keep trying you might get there someday Whoa! anyway give me a like and um thanks for watching me next time we are going to put sound on this thing and it may shock you how I can do that without messing it up. Got to wait for some parts to come in or some materials. And the trick to it is the old mounts for the pit guard. Hey, see you soon.